Hi everyone, so I think that's most people logged on. Um, welcome to today's webinar, What Can a Career in Switzerland Offer You? Brought to, brought to you by Oliver James. Uh, so today we have Joel Murphy, Natalie Lightfoot and Jack Singer joining us. So I will hand over to them to introduce themselves. Uh, Natalie, would you like to go first? Absolutely. Yep, no problem. My name's Natalie Lightfoot. I'm leading the Swiss Finance Risk and Compliance Desk at Oliver James, focusing on both perm and interim. I've been with Oliver James for eight and a half years, primarily focused on the UK life actuarial market. I actually came back from my second maternity leave at Oliver James and moved over to head up um, and spearhead this desk in the Swiss market. Fantastic. And uh, Joel, would you like to go next? Yes, my name's Joel. I'm a specialist recruiter for the Swiss data and analytics market. I'm currently leading a team of two and we cover the full spectrum of data. So that covers everything from data engineering. So that's hands on development work through to analytics, predictive analytics and also data management. So that covers the implementation of new data processes and practices. Uh, we're working with quite a large portfolio of really interesting clients in the banking sector all the way through to small tech startups. Personally, I'm working. I've been working in the Swiss data market now for one and a half years seeing some huge growth in this area uh, and really looking forward to what's coming next year. And finally, Jack, welcome to you. Yes, hello, uh, I'm Jack. I focus on cloud infrastructure for Oliver James Switzerland and I specifically look after the French speaking region. I've worked within this specific location for, for around six months now and we work with a vast and varied network of clients from traditional financial and banking sectors all the way to luxury brands and security companies and, and everywhere in between really. Uh, fantastic. Um, so I think we're going to kick start with the uh, questions now. Um, so, Joel, I'm going to come to you first. What opportunities are available in Switzerland? Great. So um, in terms of different opportunities in Switzerland, uh, industry rise, you've got some of the largest financial services companies in the world. Um, Zurich is also a huge tech hub. Um, so going to the finance side, you've got some big banks like UBS, for example. You've got insurance firms like Swiss Re, Allianz, Zurich Insurance. Um, and then you've also got some of the, the biggest names um, in the technology industry as well. Um, you've also got massive vendors. Um, businesses such as Avalok uh, and AWS. Um, they're making sort of real ground and, and uh, headway within the Swiss market. And then in the consultancy space as well, the consulting market is absolutely huge. Um, we're seeing some, some really interesting uh, companies like KPMG and Accenture, some of the bigger businesses, um, and also some, some exciting new smaller consultancies starting to come up, uh, the likes of D1 and Unit 8. Fantastic, thank you. Um, can I just remind everyone that um, we will be doing a Q&A at the end, so um, the chat tool um, is available if you would like to ask any questions to our consultants afterwards. Um, so we're going to go on to the next question. Um, Natalie, I'm going to come to you for this one. What can a career in Switzerland offer people? Thanks, Marion. So I think a career in Switzerland can offer people a lot more diversity than traditional roles here in the UK. And the teams are much smaller, so people are less siloed in terms of what they do. You have a lot more visibility, um, you know, from the senior stakeholders, but also in terms of the work that you're doing as well. So it's a lot more versatile. I think we find that candidates end up being quite well rounded as opposed to the UK market where they're predominantly focused on one space. So I feel though, you know, for a long term career perspective, it gives just a well rounded view of someone's capabilities. The senior end of the market is quite stable so people do not have the na naturally the same transition as they would do in the UK market um, but they do have the length of tenure uh, and you do see people kind of progressing through the ranks with one organisation uh, pr predominantly. Um, I think feel the teams are a lot more international as well so a lot of different languages a lot of different cultures um, the Swiss businesses usually have a hub in Switzerland or it's one of their group head office and then you have lots of engagements with different countries across EMEA and obviously the US and Asia Pacific as well in terms of moving over to Switzerland and from a family perspective, we find that a lot of people do want to make this transition, especially when they have younger children, just for the work life balance as well. I mean, they don't traditionally work the same long hours as they do here in the UK. And we find that, you know, most um, candidates and hiring managers that we speak to, you know, like to go uh, hiking on the, on the weekends with their family. So it's very much a family friendly kind of safe environment to raise children. Um, however, I do think that the cost of living is probably one thing um, that people don't really consider too much when moving over to Switzerland. And it's just understanding about how the different tax regulations look like. And it all comes down to what canton you live and work in. 
So it's a lot more geographically focused as opposed to the UK where you could live anywhere in the UK and pay the same tax. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, and we'll go on to our next question. Um, Jack, uh, I'll come to you as someone who has previously relocated to Switzerland. What are the key considerations when relocating? Well, yeah, I think as Natalie alluded to there, I think the cost of living is your largest consideration. The salaries are certainly very attractive and are very good compared to other places in Europe. However, understanding the cost of living uh, and what that will mean to you uh, is important, especially if you are coming over with a family um, and and some dependents there as well. So, so I guess the main areas around that to consider are, uh, I think the first one is, is really private health insurance. Um, that is a legal obligation within Switzerland. They do not have a public system. So this is must be paid and medical care is really second to none. The quality is incredibly high um, as there's no real waiting list as it's all private and, and you're seen to as soon as you have an issue. However, this does come at quite a premium cost. There are a few different policies you can choose there, but but they do ramp up quite quite an expensive bill. Um, I suppose another thing to consider, as Natalie also alluded to, is the tap tax implications. Switzerland works in a canton system, which is a bit like states within the US where they operate separately in some aspects, um, tax being one of them. So I suppose if you know some friends who live in a certain area, it does not necessarily relate to what your tax implications will be um, as you go there. So it's something to consider when looking at a job opportunity and where that company sits and, and where you want to live and how that tax will, will affect your salary. What I would say, though, is it generally is low tax across the country compared to other places in Europe. So as much as it's something to consider, it, it should never be too high. And I suppose lastly, um, in order for relocators for families, um, it's important to also consider that if you're coming over with children who are of a certain age that would like to continue their education in English, um, this is a fairly high expense um, uh, as there's many good international schools there. However, they, they do come at a premium. However, if you do have children that are young enough, I would always suggest to put them in the public school system. It's one of the best in the world uh, and it allows them to be able to speak fluent French, fluent English or fluent German um, and opens up opportunities not only for English speaking for their education, but but in other languages also. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, and I'm going to come to you next, Joel, with this question. Um, what would you say a typical working pattern looks like in Switzerland? That's a great question. Um, I, I think this is quite interesting because right now, um, obviously coming off the back of the COVID pandemic, we're seeing lots of trends um, when it comes to flexibility. Um, most businesses, as you can imagine, uh, have adopted a hybrid working model, um, which means that you'll be working some days on site, some days remotely. Um, and what we're seeing at the moment is that this is really allowing people to work. Uh, we're seeing a lot of businesses that are allowing people to work you know, four days a week from home. Um, and at four days a week uh, in total, uh, whether that be um, at the beginning or the end of the week. Um, what this means is it really provides great work life balance, um, extra flex flexibility. Um, and it's just something we're seeing because it's, it's becoming more and more common. Um, businesses are starting to realize that um, it's uh, it's allowing people to put more more work, more effort into their work during the week. Um, I think what, what uh, I think probably over the last six months, I've personally made three placements that have been part time. Um, so that's between 60 to 80 percent work. Um, and those are probably some of the biggest trends I'm seeing right now in, in working patterns. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Joel. Um, and Natalie, I'm going to come to you next. Um, what are the considerations when applying for a, oh, sorry, uh, would you see more contract or permanent opportunities available in Switzerland? I think primarily it's definitely um, a permanent led market, specifically the finance side. Um, I mean, we do ha absolutely have contract roles that come through as well, but I would say that you don't have as many kind of career contractors as you would do in the UK. So it's a little bit different in terms of Switzerland of having your own limited company. Um, so usually we have candidates that occupy um, go through contracts through a Seiko license. If you, if you do set up your own limited company, you have to show you've been got three ongoing clients over a certain period of time and you end up being kind of a mini consultancy of sorts. So the traditional contractor ends up going through a, uh, a Seiko license and that's usually kind of a six to 12 month period. Um, and you'd be paying your being paid as a normal employee and they'll pay your standard tax and your social security as well. Brilliant. And I'm going to stick with you for the next one, Natalie, if that's all right. Um, would you say what are the considerations when applying for a permanent or contract position? 
Um, good question. I think in order to work in Switzerland, you need to have a work permit, and that's either obtained by you having an EU passport or being married to someone who has an EU um, passport to be able to get a work permit, and that would usually be a B permit primarily, and then that would kind of transfer over to a C permit. So it's not as easy as just kind of um, upping up sticks and, and relocating over to, to Switzerland, especially for a contract, unless that's already in place. I think for the permanent aspects, I think the process is quite similar to the UK in terms of standardised interviews. I think the languages would also be a consideration. So whilst we work, um, a lot of businesses have English as their working language, and um, you'll all also likely have a team language. So it depends on which area of Switzerland you're looking at. Geneva, obviously looking at the French speaking part, um, Bern, Zurich, uh, the, the German speaking part as well, and then the Italian speaking part in kind of Ticino, um, close to the Italian border. So it's all about how you can manage the interaction going on for you personally. If you're looking to kind of build uh, personal relationships internally, it's being mindful that you may want to start studying or um, developing another language depending on where you're living. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, I've seen a few questions come into the chat tool. That's great, thanks. If you guys have any other questions, uh, please just um, type them in there and we'll get to them at the Q&A at the end. Um, so our next question, um, I think we're going to delve into the markets in Switzerland now. Uh, Joel, um, what would you, um, what does the technology market currently look like in Switzerland, would you say? Um, so at the moment, I would say um, that we're seeing some trends towards uh, cloud technologies. So the biggest three providers at the moment are AWS, so that's Amazon, GCP, which is the Google Cloud Platform, um, and Azure, which is developed by Microsoft. Um, these are definitely the, the biggest requirements we're seeing right now. So many businesses are moving from on-premise to cloud-based systems. Um, this allows for uh, far more efficient processes. Uh, it's more cost efficient um, than on-premise systems as well. Um, so I think those are those are definitely the biggest demand uh, biggest demand trends right now. Um, nearly every business we're working with is moving onto the cloud if they haven't already. Um, this means they're looking for experts people who have lots and lots of, of hands on um, experience with these technologies. Um, they're looking for people on the contract side to, to come in and, and get things up and running uh, straight away. Uh, and they're also looking for permanent hires as well. People have, again, lots of, of hands on experience in this area. I think the other big trend we're seeing as well, specifically within the data market is um, is the big data technology stack. Again, as businesses start to handle bigger, bigger data sets, um, they need to cope uh, with those data sets and they need to bring in the right tools and technologies in order to be able to, to manage those properly. So there we're seeing things like Kafka and Spark. So those are a big, uh, big data processing frameworks, uh, as well as technologies like Hadoop and, and other frameworks as well. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Joel. Um, and we're going to move on to the cloud market now. Jack, would you like to um, take us through um, what, um, what the cloud market is currently looking like in Switzerland? Yeah, certainly. I, I suppose a lot of it would be echoing uh, Joel's point that most of the clients that we work with are adopting cloud-based technologies, um, and we see lots of migrations across the country. I would say in, in Switzerland, adopting potentially newer, more modern uh, cloud systems, they're slightly behind the rest of Europe. Th this was generally to do with data and information having to be stored on a Swiss-based cloud. And for a long time, the Microsoft Azure cloud was the only offering um, to, to a lot of these companies. And legal obligations for the financial companies said that they had to host within these clouds. So things are moving um, forward and modernizing. Um, AWS have recently hosted a cloud um, close to Zurich. So that opened up the market for AWS, which has been growing over the past couple of years. Um, but now it opens up to the larger financial institutes as well. So in terms of capabilities, I think there's lots of strong people within Azure uh, and, and AWS is certainly a growing market there where there's lots of capabilities and, uh, and lots of skills. I suppose the one that's lacking a bit at the moment is, uh, is GCP, uh, Google Cloud, uh, as Joel alluded to. It's something that the, certainly the smaller companies are and startups are trying to adopt. Um, and, and some of the larger luxury brands are all, also trying to adopt it. Um, however, there is a huge lack of solid engineers and solid capabilities within the country there so they're finding it quite difficult to find the people to to implement it so i only see this increasing moving forward that anybody with good google cloud um experience relocating to the country or, or already living there will, will become in, in in real high demand moving forward uh, and this shows them a modernizing across the whole cloud market where using 
containerization tools such as Kubernetes um, is also becoming very popular and is very much in demand across, across all three cloud providers, really. Brilliant, thank you. And um, next, we're going to be looking at the finance and compliance markets. Natalie, could you give us um, an insight into what they look like currently? Absolutely. So I'll tackle the compliance market first. I think it's, the market's been hiring quite a lot in the, in the compliance space. I think businesses are really strengthening their compliance teams. We've seen quite a few heads of compliance, lots of senior compliance officers, um, primarily with focus on sanctions and, and anti-corruption and bribery type roles that we've seen come through. I mean, naturally, with compliance, you're always going to be watching out for new regulations coming into play. Um, and I think there's work going on around th third party and due diligence. So whilst I would say in terms of the contract market isn't necessarily as prevalent on the compliance side, there absolutely are some contract roles there but it's not as flooded as it is in the UK. On the finance side I think it's quite varied. If we look at the roles that we've been recruiting recently there's been a lot of controlling positions. They seem to be in high demand at the moment as well as your traditional accountancy roles. We are seeing more of a mixture of requirements for candidates to be a hybrid so hybrid actuarial hybrid accountancy especially when we're looking to IFRS 17. There are some companies in Switzerland who are just getting on board with IFRS 17 so they're starting their processes now whereas obviously other businesses have been doing dry runs for the past year so are pretty comfortable with this space. Brilliant thank you very much and um, finally we've got one more question left and um, Jack I'm going to put you on the spot here. How can Oliver James support people in finding their next position in Switzerland? Well, thank you for putting me on the spot, um, but it's quite all right. Um, I, I suppose we potentially operate slightly differently to other agencies. We look to build long lasting relationships with, with candidates. So whether you're in country already or relocating, um, we, we understand certainly that relocation is a huge step. So we just want to understand as much about you and your career as possible uh, and really paint that picture of your professional and personal future. And then hopefully we can we can be able to facilitate that for you. I mean, this job would be very easy if we placed candidates after the first time to speak with, uh, after speaking with them. That's not really ha how it operates. Um, I believe actually it's about 60% of our placements uh, across the business. Uh, we have talked to that person six months prior um, and they've been on our system and had regular points of contact. So it really does reinforce the idea that these long term relationships will result in, in, in some form of opportunity for you in Switzerland. So I suppose whether you're actively looking to relocate or just considering it and would like to learn more. I think myself certainly, and I can speak for the other consultants in the team, they'd be more than happy to hear from you and talk to you a bit more specifically about your positions and, and what's available in the market, and then hopefully try and find something that, that fits your ambitions moving forward. That's a brilliant. Thank you very much, Jack. Um, and finally, um, we're going to come on to our Q&A. So I'm going to introduce, introduce Steph, um, who will be hosting the Q&A. Hi everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm Steph Tyler. Um, we're going to be running through the Q and A today. Um, we've had a couple of questions through, um, so I will quickly run through these. Um, the first one is um, I'm going to direct this to Natalie. Um, so when I've been contacted by Swiss agencies, they are not interested if you do not have a B permit, since UK is not part of the EU. How does Oliver James approach this hurdle? I think that's a great question and ultimately as much as we would want to change the laws <laughs> we, we we can't i think that b permit is is it necessary to be able to work both on a perm and um and contract basis if you are a, a uk passport holder and you aren't married to someone who has an eu passport the only way to kind of get work in switzerland would be through sponsorship um and that is kind of quite difficult as much as it would be kind of here in the UK. So it's really finding a role that one, they can't find anybody locally. They can't find anyone then in the wider aspects of Europe and then um, that it would be kind of sponsorship. So whilst I personally wouldn't be able to help you over that particular hurdle, I'd be able to give you some advice about how best to maybe bed in with that company here in the UK and then look for an international uh, intercompany transfer. That would be my best advice, really. Brilliant. Thanks, Natalie. Um, and we've had the next question through, which I will direct to Jack um, this time. Um, so, Jack, you kind of talked around um, obviously the benefits of working with um, Oliver James. Um, but how do we specifically support people who are looking to re relocate to Switzerland? Yeah, I, I suppose we try and support in, in every way we can. Um, I, I think the largest way we can influence it is is through advice um, uh, and constant contact to understand how it impacts, you know, not only yourself, but your family. Um, 
We also work very closely with with our clients, especially when they're looking for more niche technologies, when they understand people may be relocators, to work with them to understand potentially what a relocation package might look like and some help they could provide. Obviously, this does vary between clients, um, but we certainly are always working on your side to try and influence our clients to be able to help you as much as possible. Some things that are certainly helpful um, out with usual relocation packages is some companies offer tax advice or um, for free for a year, which can help you bed in and understand how certain financial systems and tax systems work within Switzerland. And some some others might even offer a, a apartment for, for a short period of time to help you um, find a home, especially if you're coming with a family, maybe to come over initially and, uh, and, and search for the right place for you. But for, from our side and Oliver James, we will have just constant contact to understand what your pain points are and I guess what's important to you when considering a relocation so that we can work together, I guess, to to find resolutions to these and uh, and give you as much information as possible to make, to make it as, as seamless and as, as easy as it can be. Brilliant. Thanks, Jack. Um, so moving on to the next question. So, Joel, I'm going to direct this to you. Um, so the question is, I come from Germany where CB generally have the applicant's photograph. Is this a requirement in Switzerland? Thank you, Seth. Um, well, it's never a requirement. Um, however, I would say it's definitely advisable. Um, I think um, the majority of applications and CVs that I see coming onto my desk have a, normally have a picture associated with it, and that's for very good reason. I think the first thing it really brings your application to life if the hiring manager can actually, you know, see what you look like. Um, it may, essentially makes makes it more real for you. Um, so I would say it's it's always advisable. It's it's a really uh, it's a really good way of kind of presenting yourself to to a hiring manager. So I think definitely it's advisable. Whilst it's not a requirement, I, I would definitely um, I'd suggest that you should you should um, put your picture on there. Brilliant. Thanks, Joel. Um, so next question, Jack, I'm coming back to you. Um, what tips would you give for ensuring my CV is desirable for any jobs in the Swiss market? Are there certain things I should include? Yeah, so so as Joel said, uh, a picture does help just to allow you not to stand out potentially for the wrong reasons against other um, other CVs. However, one thing I think is a very strong necessity um, within Switzerland is having a strong educational background. So to make sure that's highlighted in the best way um, it, it is certainly key because a lot of our clients and across Switzerland really they'll require a certain level of education. Um, and to make sure that's highlighted um, it, it is really key. Uh, apart from that, I think not just for Switzerland, but probably overall, the best way to approach a CV is to adapt it and, uh, and work with your consultant for the specific role. So, so I know we're always very happy to, to sit down and, and talk you through exactly what our client's looking for and, and maybe areas of your career to highlight. So I would just make sure that under each role or each position you've had, there's a small a small summary of, of the highlights or, or the things things you achieved there. Um, this is also moving into making sure that there's a clear list of technologies that were used um, within the technology industry, as uh, that will be the first thing a uh, hiring manager will look for, and then and then delve into a bit more detail into into the sp specifics of your position. Um, so I would just say work very closely with your consultant to make sure it's adapted and and pertinent for for the role you're applying for. Brilliant. Thanks, Jack. Um, so next question, I'm going to come to Natalie. Um, how do I foster my relationship with your colleagues over at Oliver James? Oh, that's a nice question. Um, <clears throat> just give us a call. <laughs> I think you know we're all really friendly and approachable. Um, if we're not able to take the call, drop us an email, connect with us on LinkedIn. In terms of building long term relationships, it's about getting to know one, one another and what processes works for both sides. Um, I think being transparent exactly about what you're looking for ultimately is, is really important to foster that because if we then present you with those profiles that you said you were interested in and they're not of interest, and we really need to know kind of why that is and potentially what we're missing what information we're missing and, and why that isn't of interest at that time um it's just about kind of keeping contact open um we won't be sending you jobs uh, every day un unlikely unless we have a flurry of jobs that all come through but it's being mindful that you know when we are having these conversations we will absolutely keep you in mind and we will approach you with any role that that comes through that, that is in your requirements or within your skill set what I would say as well is if you do see something of interest, whether that be on LinkedIn or something along those lines, and 
you want to know more about it, send it to us. Ultimately, we'll either have a relationship with that client, we'll be able to tell you a little bit more, or at least it gives us an idea of you know what it is actually that's catching your eye. Because I appreciate that not all roles fit within a certain bracket, but if something is of interest, send it over to us and we'll be able to discuss that with you in more detail. But just give us a call. We're more than happy to chat. Brilliant. Thanks, Natalie. Um, so a couple more questions. Um, next one I'm going to direct to Jack. Um, so is it an advantage to be hired if the candidate is already living in Switzerland? I suppose like anything, it, it does make it slightly easier for, for there not to be relocation involved. And I suppose there's less risks um, on the client side if you're already living in Switzerland or even in, in the city where the role is. What I would say is most clients are quite aware when when they're looking for a position, whether the skills are available in Switzerland or, or potentially less so. So a lot of the opportunities that we do work, especially with relocators, the hiring managers and the companies themselves are, are quite aware that it's easier to find these skill sets um, from abroad. And I think as long as you have a EU passport and as Natalie mentioned that the work permit could be easily sourced, um, I don't think it's a huge issue. Um, coming as a relocator. Sometimes it changes timescales um, slightly. However, a standard notice period in Switzerland is three months. So it does give you enough time potentially if you can negotiate your side and obviously understand how difficult and how much time that relocation will take. Um, it's just being open and clear with, with the client and with the, with the company that you're applying for. Um, and they're usually very accommodating in terms of timescale, in terms of help and understanding the implications the relocation can have. So I, I wouldn't worry too much, but obviously if you're living in the city already and you know the area, it, it certainly will help you. Great, thank you, Jack. Um, so this one I'm going to direct again to Natalie. Um, the question is, um, do I have more chance of an interview for a Swiss opportunity if I have a referral from an employee at a Swiss company? Mm, good question. I I don't think you necessarily have more chance of an interview if you have a referral. But um, I, what I would say is that referrals and references are always um, are beneficial. I think to you, it really depends on the the nature of the role and the nature of the organisation. We can always take references, you know, from your your friend in a, who's already working in a Swiss company and kind of supplement your application when we're sending it over. I think it would be really on a case by case basis. So I think having a reference for someone who works in Switzerland, yeah, I, I don't think necessarily would help gain an interview per se, but I think it could help supplement your application um, depending on the role. And that may, you know, help get you get an interview, but it really depends on who the other candidates are and, and some other circumstances as well, but it can't hurt. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Natalie. Um, I'm just going to ask one more question. Um, there are a few others that I think have come through, but they're quite specific. So um, I think it's best if we come back to you individually on those questions. Um, but final question is, um, I'm going to direct this to Joel. Um, who would be best to discuss potential project management opportunities? I'm not getting anywhere with direct applications and I'm an EU and UK citizen. That's a good question. I think that that depends. Uh, we have a number of consultants who work in uh, on obviously on the both the finance and tech side. Um, a lot of us cover project management roles, so I guess it's it depends on um, which specific area you're looking to move into project management. Um, I think the best way to figure that out is to go on LinkedIn. Um, send us a connection request um, and um, just get in touch with us that way. Um, normally we have a description um, on our profiles, um, just, you know, just detailing what types of roles we normally cover. So it should be be detailed there. Um, we have, a as I said, we have a number of colleagues who do change management, um, who cover project management on the tech side. And then we have a number of colleagues on finance who also do project management. So just go onto our LinkedIn profile, send us a connection and um, yeah, drop us a message. Fantastic. Thank you everyone for sending in your questions. And again, if we've been unable to answer your questions, um, we've noted them all down, so we will contact you directly with an answer to your query. Um, so yeah, that concludes today's webinar. We hope you found today's content interesting and useful. Um, thank you to our speakers, Joel, Natalie and Jack. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. Um, over the next couple of days, we'll be releasing a recording of the webinar. So keep an eye out on our LinkedIn page for a direct link to today's recording. Um, so that is it today from us. Um, again, thanks for tuning in and we hope to see you again soon.